Hey everybody, it's Alyssa here and today I wanted to bring you a quick life update video. I know some of you probably don't care, so in that case, I'll just see you guys next time. Okay. Number one, I have decided, this was a little while ago, this is probably like a very delayed life update. I have decided that I'm going to be going to human nursing school. I have no desire to ever fully leave animal medicine. I absolutely love emergency veterinary medicine. It is one of my biggest passions for like the past like three to five years. Actually, I did shadow an emergency vet when I was 14, so nine years. <laughs> And it's funny because I actually work with him now. Uh, anyways, I'm going back for human nursing sometime next year. I'm currently in the process of taking prerequisites. I am in my last one to two prerequisites depending on the schools that I want to apply to. I'm currently in a summer accelerated microbio class, but I may or may not have to take chemistry, which chemistry is not my friend. That's a story for another day. But I... I'm looking forward to nursing school. Um, two of my closest friends actually, one of them has been a practicing nurse for the past year and one of them just graduated from nursing school and just seeing them and I just, I love the technical side of things and that's why I love being an emergency vet nurse. Unfortunately, the money in veterinary medicine just isn't there. I have a lot of dreams and goals that I want to achieve and right Going through my original degree, my first bachelor's degree, I wasn't really concerned about long term. I was like, yes, I want to be happy. But for me, it was either animal medicine or veterinary. Sorry, it was either animal medicine or human medicine. It was never both. But I realized that even if I go back for human nursing, I don't have to leave animal nursing. Like I still have that, that I can always do part time or per diem. And if I graduate nursing school and I'm only working three twelves, what says that I can't work one to two days at an animal emergency room? Like as a part-time job. Like nothing says I can't do that, which that never seemed to cross my mind before. It was always one or the other. It was never both. That was one of my biggest decisions was that I don't have to actually leave animal medicine. Those of you that didn't know, cause I don't think I've ever really addressed this on my channel. I, right out of high school, I was applying pre-nursing to all of my schools. Like I wanted to be a nurse for people right out of high school and I realized my passion for animals and I kind of strayed away from that human side of things and went to animals and now I'm going back and I do have a lot of options whether I want to do I'm kind of in the mindset right now that I kind of want to do they have second degree accelerated BSN programs that range anywhere from 12 to 24 months to get your bachelor's of science in nursing um, there is also the option if I wanted to take a cheaper route on doing an associate's degree in nursing, an ADN, um, and then going for my bachelor's online later on. But unfortunately, those ADN programs are 18 to 24 months and I could do less time and have a bachelor's. So I'm, I'm kind of in that middle phase of things right now. Um, taking my last few prerequisites, I will start applying, um, actually like, Few, the next few weeks into August I'll be applying which is really exciting um, otherwise this summer I actually did take a step back from emergency veterinary medicine for personal reasons I still so I was working full-time in an emergency 24-hour veterinary hospital I took a step back to working per diem for the span of the summer at least until the second week of August um, I took a position as head lifeguard at a town near mine um, that was closer and they were offering me more money and better hours. And emergency veterinary medicine, if you have never worked in it, you do not know how mentally, emotionally, and physically exhausting that job is. And add on top of that COVID, add on top so of that my ER hour. is over, it's about an hour away from my house. So it's an hour there working nine hours without a break, mentally, emotionally, not leaving on time, so working 10 to 11 hours, and then having to drive an hour back home at two in the morning, and doing it all again, it was just, it was too much. I still love what I do, like the job in itself, I loved. It was all the extenuating circumstances with 
management, COVID, that kind of thing that was, and like the drive and school. And like, there were a lot of other things that were adding to the decision for me to take a step back. I did not fully leave. Um, and I do, I do still work per diem at my large animal facility as well. I have not been there in the past couple of months. They did stop having per diem workers come in to helpfully helps not spread the virus, which is understandable. Um, and I've been working head guard at this facility for the past month or so I think we're like five weeks in um, and I do have I think three or four weeks left um, and then I will be going back part-time two to three days a week um, at my ER hospital for the time being um, I am also retesting my emergency medical technician um, licensing I already passed my written EMT exam and now I just have to pass my psychomotor or practical exam those were postponed because of COVID uh, for those of you that don't know I was a certified and licensed um, EMT in the state of Massachusetts back 2016 to 2018 and at that point I was working with animals and I didn't think I would ever need it and I didn't want to recertify and pay for the state licensing and everything so I didn't recertify but they do have this um, option where if you do a it's like an NCCR national competency I forget what exactly what it stands for but it's a two-day class you go in for two eight-hour days it was like multiple like Sunday Sunday and you go in you pretty much they go over everything that's new everything that's changed it also counts for people that currently have a licensor like oh, a licensor that currently have a certificate and license as their like continuing ed but for me it counted I had to do that class and then I was able to take my written and then now I have to apply to take my psychomotor exam I have I did pass my written so I have a provisional emergency medical technician certificate right now and then I do want to take my psychomotor exam and my goal is to be an emergency department technician in an ER for people that is the goal during nursing school because I do want to go into emergency human medicine as well I just prefer emergency medicine it's just what I do, what I love. I like not knowing what's gonna happen every day. I like learning new things. I like constantly learning new things. I don't know if I've done a life, dip, a life update enough, like far enough back, but I graduated from my university. I actually got my degree back in February of 2020. I finished classes like two days before Christmas and technically got my degree in February. I have now a bachelor's of science with an individual concentration and that is in my degree is in animal therapy and management so my end life goal is to eventually own and operate my own canine and equine rescue and rehabilitation center working with therapy with veterans that's the goal but i don't have enough funds to start a horse or to have a facility where I can have a dog or be able to do that training and rehabilitation that I need right now, which is why I wanna go back for human nursing, um, because it's going to provide me with a better financial situation. And then also I, there is so much more room to go to grow in skills and in a different variety of fields in nursing. Because I want to do emergency medicine now, but if I ever want to go into dermatology or critical, like more critical care, like an ICU, or even do like a like a daily like general practice, like I have that availability. I also can get my master's and my doctorate and like keep learning and keep growing. Where there gets to be a point in veterinary medicine where one the salary growth with each certification doesn't add up. And then there is like a cap to like there's no masters in being like a veterinary technician or a doctorate in being a veterinary technician like that's not a thing so i like that human medicine can offer me that also the financial stability of that and i also do love helping people so maybe i'll work in a va you never know probably one of the biggest ones i recently tore my meniscus <laughs> And you can't tell because I'm sitting. I actually on June 14th, 2020, I tore my right medial meniscus. 
not gonna go into detail really that much. It's the cartilage that helps cushion your knee and provides um, the ability to turn and to take impact. So I did that, it's kind of a long story. I My knee had been popping pretty consistently for a few weeks. Like every time I'd squat and then stand up, it would pop. It wasn't painful or anything. It was just kind of annoying. It was just a click. Like I didn't know what it was. I was like, whatever, it'll probably go away, away eventually. On the 16th of June, 14th, 14th of June, I went for a run and on that run, it started clicking and popping, just running, not squatting at that point. And it was a little painful, but I was able to run through it, push through it, was fine. Uh, and then a few hours later, about three or four hours later, I kneeled down at work at my emergency vet job, vet tech job, that I kneeled down on the floor to do CPR on a larger canine patient. And ever since then, I wasn't able to walk normally and I tore my meniscus. I did end up working six and a half hours on a torn meniscus after the fact because I couldn't leave because somebody else had called out and I wasn't gonna leave my other coworker alone. So, and then I was seen by urgent care and an orthopedic doctor and physical therapist. And I'm currently in physical therapy. As of right now, I'm trying not to do surgery. Most of the time you do need surgery with meniscus tears. But if you get surgery with a meniscus tear, even if it's orthoscopic, it's gonna leave me to have premature arthritis. There's a high chance of that happening and then needing a total knee replacement. My grandfather has had both of his knees replaced. So I'd rather not do that and also don't want surgery and the recovery and all that kind of stuff. It's, it. it's also my driving knee. So I'd not be able to go anywhere forever. But yeah. I've been doing really well with physical therapy. I'm like three and a half weeks into physical therapy. I can fully walk on it again without a limp. I can pretty much walk on it without a brace for a prolonged period of time, even though I probably shouldn't. I'm still having some issues with like turning and like too much impact, that kind of thing, which I will probably have those issues for a while, which makes power lifting difficult, which is really sad, but I'll get back to it eventually, I hope. I'll be doing um, more life updates. I don't have corona. Don't have any symptoms. I was just dealing with a lot of school and work and all the 700 things going around in my mind. I did over the spring, I did maybe 15 to 25 different hikes all over New England. And I'm looking to do more once my meniscus heals and it's not 95 now like it is right now. I had an amazing time doing that. I was very sad that the gyms were closed, but I made the best of it and went to the beach a couple times and went on a lot of hikes, a lot of bike rides, a lot of runs, made the best out of it. But we're gonna get through this. We got this. Everybody just please wear a mask. Just be nice to each other. Just don't be an asshole. Like, there's no need. Don't hug each other, but like give air hugs. But yeah, so be nice to your veterinary professionals, please. <laughs> I worked for most of COVID before everything was opening up and it was pure chaos and hell. And people were yelling at us and berating at us all the time. Just everybody just take a deep breath. We're gonna get through this together. It's, it's gonna be okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed this short little life update. I know it was kind of all over the place. I didn't have anything written down or anything planned for this video, but I know Hannah requested one and I figured I would kind of get an update out there for those of you that actually care about me a little bit behind just the content that I put out. And yeah, so if you have any other suggestions for any other videos, please leave them in the comment section down below. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye everyone.